what is the absolute best and most effective guitar practice routine and how do you make the most amount of progress in the shortest amount of time possible. Those are some very important questions that I'm pretty obsessed with myself and it's also without a doubt the most frequently asked question that you guys and girls send me on Patreon. So I gave it a lot of thought and pinned down my personal five most important key factors when it comes to creating practice plans that suit your personal practice goals. And these five easy topics and tricks that I'd like to show you today will help you with achieving your personal guitar goals much faster. So let's not waste any more time and talk about the very important and often neglected topic of practice plans. Hello there, it's Future Bernd from the editing chamber. Make sure to stick around until the end of this video to see an awesome shred collab that I organized with my members on Patreon. And also make sure to join us over there to become a part of the next project that we are working on together. If you're subscribed to the channel and part of the community already, you will have noticed that we looked at an insane amount of exercises this year. So at the end of this very strange year, it's the perfect time to take a small step back and to talk about how to actually practice all of this. Before we get to the five important steps we're discussing today, let's talk about why I actually want to convince you to work with a practice plan and why it is so important. Maybe you can relate to this. When I started out playing and practicing guitar, so getting a bit more serious about it, I just worked with random exercises, riffs and licks for a couple of hours each day. So I absolutely had no system or structure when it came to my time with the instrument every single day. And after a couple of years of working like that, I was starting to wonder why I didn't see any significant improvements with my technique and theory skills. As soon as I started working with a more structured approach in the form of a practice plan, my skills basically skyrocketed. So if if you would like to improve when it comes to difficult techniques like alternate picking, sweep picking, legato, hammer-ons and pull-offs, all of that stuff, or if you want to advance your music theory skills as fast as possible in the form of complex chord shapes, exotic scales and all of that interesting stuff, this is the exact approach and pretty much the only approach that brought me significant results in the last 15 years of playing guitar. So I really hope that I can convince you to work with a more structured approach with today's video. Let's talk about step number one of creating your own personal practice routine right now. So the first topic might sound a bit obvious, it's about finding the perfect time of the day for your practice routine. But make no mistake, this is one of the absolute most important topics, at least in my personal opinion. If you're not a morning person at all and you force yourself to practice every single morning, you will get tired of it eventually. Or if you're really exhausted after work and just need to rest, you probably won't be a big fan of those evening sessions after a couple of weeks. So this decision is really important in my opinion because it's all about consistency. You want to turn this into a fun daily habit and you will see some pretty amazing growth if you keep working. But if you only end up doing this for one or two weeks, the results won't be that great. Maybe you know it already in case you follow me on Instagram, I like to go for morning sessions around 4.30 in the morning simply because nobody is bothering me at that time and I'm completely focused on practicing and playing guitar. So once you tried out a couple of options and decided on your personal preference, it's time to move to step number two. So this is actually one of my most important recommendations for new students, especially on Patreon in the Shred Guitar community. It's incredibly helpful to decide on four different topics you want to improve in the beginning. So this is very different for every single player obviously and in my opinion you should ask yourself what are the topics that I really need to work on and to improve in order to do what I actually want to do with the guitar. So is it your absolute biggest goal to play and compose super fast and aggressive thrash metal music? then you should probably prioritize techniques like fast downstrokes and alternate picking in your practice routine. Or do you want to become the world's best jazz or fusion player? Then you will probably need a much bigger focus on music theory in your practice routine, like chord theory, exotic scales, improvisation and all of that stuff. So try to really focus on your biggest goals right now and write down four topics that you want to improve. That way you can dedicate 15 to 20 minutes to each topic every single day. And of course you can swap them or change them at any point to fit your needs. This is definitely not set in stone once you decide on those four topics in the beginning. So please don't overthink it. It's much more important to get started than to find the four absolute most perfect topics if it takes a couple of months for you to do that. Now let's get more practical with step number three. So this topic mainly concerns practicing techniques like alternate picking, sweep picking and all of that crazy stuff. I know that those are the topics that most of you guys and girls are here for, so let's talk about that. 
One of my biggest mistakes in the beginning when it comes to practicing techniques like that is not really working on the three key tempo zones. I always thought in the beginning if I really challenge myself and push the tempo with every single exercise and practice as fast as possible, my overall technique will get better. And that's obviously not true at all. Pushing your picking speed with 16th notes at over 200 beats per minute won't make you a tighter player at 120 beats per minute. So with technique exercises I mostly focus on those three kind of key time zones. I work on exercises at a very slow tempo, really paying very close attention to my technique, like hand synchronization. My left hand are my fingers bending away from the fretboard, for example. Am I really playing in time at those very slow tempos, which is really difficult. Then I like to work on playing tight and in time at those mid tempos, for example, 100 to 130 beats per minute. And that's what I really recommend for you because I neglected it for far too long because when we learn a new exercise, we practice it very slow to get a feeling for it. And then we immediately start pushing for those high tempos, of course. So please learn from my mistakes and don't ignore those very important mid tempos. You will need that much more often in a professional life and studio career than pushing your picking speed above 200 beats per minute when it comes to 16th notes for example. So once again for technique exercises I really like to work with those three different zones. I like to play very very slow keeping a close eye on my technique on both hands. Then I like to go for steady and tight playing with those mid tempos and after that I'm pushing my speed to develop my technique further. Now let's move to step number four. This one is about the much dreaded topic of music theory. So even if you don't plan on working with very difficult music theory concepts in your personal practice routine, for your general progress as a musician and guitar player, I recommend to at least add a theory twist to your technique exercises. So if you're working with different scale sequences to push your picking technique, for example, don't always work with the exact same scales in the exact same section of your fretboard. Try to mix it up and to also work with more interesting scales like harmonic minor, for example, or the modes, Dorian, Phrygian and Lydian are great choices if you're into rock and metal. That way you you still work on your picking technique and on your speed, but you also have those small music theory takeaways with every single session, like visualizing the fretboard much better. That also goes for sweep picking of course, like working with diminished and augmented shapes instead of just working with major and minor shapes all the time. I'm very confident that you can find small twists like that that will challenge you and that will help you with making significant progress with your theory skills by keeping things practical. Now let's move to topic number five and this one will greatly help you with keeping things consistent in the beginning. So as we said, this is all about consistency and you want to make sure to work on this every single day or at least five days a week. It would be a real shame to find the perfect practice plan that really helps you with evolving as a guitar player and then you just abandon it after a couple of weeks because you didn't turn it into a habit yet. I personally really can't imagine starting my day without my practice routine anymore. It really has become a habit for me, like brushing my teeth, for example. And one thing that really helped me with turning this into a habit in the beginning is tracking my progress and my practice sessions. I use a very simple and not really high-tech solution for that. I just have a notebook like this where I also scripted this video that I'm shooting right now. And in the beginning I would just write down the dates, the four topics that I was working on and the exercises that I was practicing and also the tempos. So it was very beneficial for me in the beginning to track my sessions like that. Of course I could also see some progress immediately after a couple of days when it comes to the BPM numbers with certain exercises. And seeing those results and also my consistency with those sessions really helped me with staying on track until now. So tracking your sessions and also tracking your progress in the beginning is a great tool for turning this into an actual habit. Of course you don't have to do that forever but it really helps out if you do it at least for the first couple of weeks. In case you still have any questions or you need some help with creating your own personal routine, you can always contact me on Patreon. Of course, we also have a really cool secret Inner Circle Facebook group for all the VIP club members. In that one, all students are posting videos on a regular basis concerning their practice progress and their practice routines. And of course, this is also the perfect kind of healthy practice environment for me to give detailed and personalized coaching and feedback to each student. 